Good evening, Koinonia. I want to use this opportunity to pray for our daddy in the Lord, Apostle Joshua Selima. Blessed be the womb that conceived him. Blessed be the womb that delivered him. Blessed be the God of his call. And I want to pray for Pastor Kenny. You will never know a better, a, a better yesterday in the name of Jesus. I was the woman that God favored. I lost my husband last year. This month on 17th, it will be one year that I buried my husband. In my presence, my daughter passed on. I said, wherever you go, to say, come back. And I was still the woman that I sent message to daddy, apostle. In the process of giving birth of this baby, within a think of a, a minute, daddy sent message that he was away. He now sent message, who am I? I called myself, who am I? Mommy, can I call you? I said, yes, daddy. He called. And that time, since yesterday, 93 p.m. in the afternoon, it was 3 c.m. Immediately, daddy prayed. I laid my hand on her belly in the labor room. 3 c.m. became 8 c.m. God did it. My, my daughter put to bed, this baby did not cry. I sent message to daddy. The baby came back to life. The second day, devil raised his ugly head. I was sitting with my daughter in the room where she delivered. And the spirit was telling me, sit down, dear. Not white. They checked our BP. It was 120 over 80, which is excellent. Immediately, doctor left. What I heard from sleep, I only heard, ah! I saw her, Steve. I said, Jesus, see her bringing blood out of her mouth. Jesus, help me. Doctor, the whole alliance doctor, they came for over 40 minutes. Immediately, I, I called Pastor Kenny. Pastor Kenny, my daughter must not die. He said, Jesus. I was rolling on the floor, praying. I saw a shoe by my side. Somebody tapped me. I, I looked. It, lo and behold, it was Pastor Kenny. He said, Mommy, stand up. I said, Daddy, I can't stand. He said, stand. He carried me with one doctor. He said, hold me. And my daughter has passed on that time. I said, Daddy, Tosin must come back. The God of Koinonia must not put me to shame. <laughs> Pastor Kenny said, hold me, mommy, don't talk. I hold him. Within five minutes, I felt peace. <laughs> Pastor Kenny said, thank you, Jesus. I said, Daddy, what happened? He said, Tosin has come back. <laughs> Doctor opened the door and said, mommy, come and speak to your daughter. I saw my daughter. She said, Mommy, what happened? For almost one hour. I said, you can't die because your father died yesterday, last year. And I have made a promise with my God that none of my children will die in my presence. And I use her now to pray for every family in this place. By the authority, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not all of you, you will not bury your children. In the name of Jesus. Your children, they will live to fulfill their promise. In the land of the living, in the name of Jesus. And we parents, we will not die a sudden death. We will all reap the fruit of our labor, of our labor in the name of Jesus. And as our daddy is coming in now, may the almighty God continue to lift him up more and more and more and more and more in the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate the Lord? Are you giving the Lord the highest praise? Are 
Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Give Jesus a loud shout of praise. Please take your seats. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor it's raining testimonies in Koinonia. And you are next in line for your own testimony. Your name, ma'am, and what the Lord has done for you. Praise the Lord. My name's Arosemary Mare. I'm here to thank God for his faithfulness in my life. The last time I was here, I was called a barren woman. <laughs> Eleven years and counting. <laughs> we started trying 2021. We went through IVF. I took in for twins. Shortly after, they lost, we lost them. No heartbeat from nowhere. I told daddy, he prayed with me and said, obey the doctors. I did. 2022, the same thing. I said, I won't text him. I will go and see him. I saw him at Doctors of Charity. He prayed for me and told me he needed to deliver me. We needed to pray a deliverance prayer. But daddy's schedule was so tight. I was in church when we listened to this grace called favor. I went back and was listening to it. And the illustration he gave about the woman that uh, had problems in her house, but her husband was uh, making, giving miracles in church. When I came, I said, okay, I can't see daddy because of his tight schedule. But I will honor the power and the presence here. I started coming, dedicating my time. Anytime there's prayer, I will sit wherever I get, I will pray. Then, that 2022, we lost twin pregnancy again. That 2023, uh, the prayer band had a night vigil. I went, I was, I'm not part of the prayer band, but I joined. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed my life out. 2023, we tried again. It we didn't even get a positive. I gave up. I lost hope. I stopped praying. I stopped coming to Koinonia. I didn't mind going to church. My husband would wake me in the night. It's 12 o'clock. You're not praying. I won't talk to him. I'll go to the toilet and keep crying. He doesn't stay at home. He said, I hate seeing you in tears. The last time I was crying bitterly, he came and told me that if God doesn't give us children, will this marriage end? Is it that you prefer them to stay than me? You have me here. Why are you doing this? I kept praying. I, I, I didn't pray. I was down. I sent that a message. I'm a shadow of myself. Things I, I don't know how to do. I don't do. I do them now. I am not me. The only message he sent me is chair of my precious Rosemary. That message alone, I kept reading it. Anytime I feel down, I will carry a chair of my precious Rosemary. Continued. I came for November miracle service last year, the last miracle service in November. We waited outside to sit inside. We didn't get a seat. I was downcasted. I said if I had known, I would have gone back home and, 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 and viewed from home. Immediately, the choir team started singing. They were singing, oh, Lua, the day I was outside, I stood up to sing. Goose pimples. I started crying from nowhere. When daddy came up, the first thing he said is, we have to attack two spirits. The spirit of cancer and those demons that molest women in their dreams and they lose their pregnancy. My brother was standing by me. He just looked at me. I was crying. He didn't really say any prayer, but I had already gotten it. Throughout that service, I was praying. I was crying. I didn't tell anybody. I said, ah. Me, I will not try again. But we still had frozen embryos. I said, God, I won't try. My parents said, don't try. You have tried. Your body is tired. Just leave it at that. If God blesses you. But I kept having this notch to just try. I didn't tell my husband. Started going to the hospital. He, was, he went out for work. He was not around. Started going to uh, 
hospital. I now remember Daddy still said in that miracle service that we should not un underlook the people sitting beside us. They might be carrying a grace we need. I, I didn't know what it meant, but that word kept disturbing me. I didn't know what it meant. I started praying. I said, I won't tell my husband. Let me do it. If it fails, let it be that. I did not waste money for frozen embryos, and I did not waste money for this. Let it just be that I tried, and it failed. When we, uh, I, I started, something said, two cannot work together unless they agree. I called him and told him, I want to try again. He said, whatever you want to do, I'm with you. That was how I started my process. Without telling anybody, just me and him. But that word, don't underlook the people that are beside you. Because I, I remember turning to the people beside me outside and said, ah, let me greet you in case you're carrying my grace. But I didn't know God meant a different thing. Two of his wife and his wife were pregnant. So when it was time to go, that night, that word kept saying, I said, God, what does it mean? The word just came. Mommy Bizum is pregnant. Mommy Adasa is pregnant. Ask them for the grace. I called them. I said, come and escort me. I'm going to the hospital. I, I, I was proud. I didn't know how to ask. The thing did not leave me on our way. I told them, this is what Apostle said in Miracle Service. That was December. Please, you people should pray for me. That the graces you have, you have never lost any, mis you have never had miscarriage, you have never lost a baby. That the grace you have, God would release it on me. And they prayed with me. That was how we went. The day of the, uh, we, we tested positive. Okay, before then, the prayer that uh, Apostle said they were going to uh, sponsor some women here. I wanted to go. Something said, you can help yourself. Let other people go. But anytime I started praying, I will say, that prayer they are praying for those people, I convert it to myself. Whatever prayer they are praying for the people that Apostle is sponsoring for IVF, oh Lord, I convert it to myself. So that was how we went, and God helped us, tested positive. The man did not stop coming. But every time he comes, a word will come from the altar. It will, be, will go for test. Nothing will happen. The babies will be fine. I bled three times. The babies were okay. I'm here to say thank you to the God of Koinonia. He has cleaned my tears. And he has blessed me. These are my testimony. A woman that was laughed at. But God blessed me with favor. The people that mattered cared about me. All those insulting me did not they did not matter. The people that mattered were the ones that stood by me. I want to thank God for the grace on this altar, for the blessings of God that He has looked at me after 11 years. He has cleaned away my tears and has blessed me with these blessings. May the name of God be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Can you join this beautiful family to celebrate the Lord? What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, 
Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.